Now, if you've come to this video, then maybe you're self-publishing on a tight budget. Maybe you're new to Ingram Spark. You need some help on the next steps with the cover. So no worries. Basically, there's three options for making a book cover. If you're cool to subscribing to Adobe uh, and investing time to learn the Adobe suite, then their product they have products for doing this kind of workflow. And that's definitely what professionals use. Pretty much all of them do that. It's a subscription model like everything today, so you know you can go that route. The second option is to hire the workout and have a professional do the cover design. Most likely they'll be using Adobe Suite also. <laughs> So I think that's overkill for, for my needs, uh, and it, it may be overkill for you as well. Um, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a book cover without Adobe using free or low-cost tools. Now, a few caveats. The tools that I'm recommending, they also have a subscription model, and they are much cheaper than Adobe. Um, I ended up subscribing to two of them eventually. Uh, these tools work just a little better marginally under a subscription, but if you want to go totally zero cost, you actually can do that. I did my first book cover exactly the way I'm going to describe uh, at zero cost for tools. Okay, before we get going, one last thing. I would like you to pay me for this tutorial. <laughs> That's right, nothing is free. Uh, so how will you do that? Well, all I want is for you to subscribe to my channel and that will be my pay. Uh, you know, for some reason I'd like my channel to get monetized someday and uh, take subscribers for that. So if you've come this far, hit the subscribe button. You never have to watch another video of mine. I don't care. It doesn't cost you anything. But that will be paying me for what I'm gonna give you, which is my workflow for book covers it took quite a bit of time to figure this stuff out, and it's the only non-Adobe workflow that I think you will be able to find out there. Uh, at the end of the video, I will put in my real email address, and I uh, am available if you subscribe to my channel. If you want to send me an email, be happy to hear from you if you have some questions about something. So with all that out of the way, let's get going. Let's first talk about the prerequisites for making the book cover. There are four prerequisites. Um, prerequisite number one is that you need to have an ISBN for your print book, and you need to know what that 13-digit number is. So we can cover getting one another time, um, but you have to have one for the template cover creation because the template um, also generates a barcode. So you need that number. Now it's true that Ingram Spark probably can make one for you. I myself didn't go that route. I knew that I was making a couple of books, so I bought a block of ISBNs. And um, you know, it depends on what you need to do, but it's cheaper to buy them in block in, uh, in bulk. You know, you buy eight or ten or whatever you need. If you just need one, well, you can buy that too. Anyway, you'll think about how to do that. Every country is different. In Australia, uh, Thorpe Boker is, is probably the way to go, but whatever country you're in, uh, you'll have to figure out who sells ISBNs. So that's prereq number one. Prereq number two is that you have to have your text complete and ready to go. The reason is that you need to know how many pages there are in the cover. Uh, uh, pardon me, you need to know how many pages there are in the book for the cover template generator to work correctly. So um, in terms of process, you want to you want to create a folder for things. Uh, put your put your book in there, make a PDF out of it. And then once you've got your PDF, see how many pages that is. So in this case, I, I want a template that has 484 pages. So uh, if you're not done writing, that's cool. Just come back to this video when you're done writing, and uh, you know the video will still be here. Prerequisite number three is that you, you probably want to have some idea of what the cover is going to look like, or at least you have 
a background image in mind. Now the background image, um, what I did for my books, which was a science fiction book, is that I got an image that is uh, from made by the Hubble Telescope, and it's it's a open source, public domain type license. They just what they ask for is that uh, you acknowledge the source of the image uh, on the image. You know, put a little notation on it, which I'll I'll show you later what that looks like in my case. So you want to, it's very important to make sure that you have the rights to the images that you're using. So you have to think about what that means to you. You can pay someone to make an image. You can find a public domain image or, or you can buy an image. Um, but anyway, you're going to need some art to, you're going to need some art to work with. And uh, there's, there's really no way around that. Now someone's probably asking, well, how big does the background image has, have to be? And that has a little bit to do with, with your cover size. But typically, um, you want an image that is going to be pretty big and pretty high res. So we're talking about a 300 dpi you know, uh, type of image. This one is almost 4,000. 3840 pixels on a side. So you're looking for at least 3,000 pixels on a side, I would, I would guess. Don't worry about the exact dimensions because when we're making the cover, I'm going to show you how we're going to use a mask to clip uh, the image. So it doesn't matter exactly how big it is, but it has to be big enough to work as a background. And then the fourth and final prereq is that you want to have a record established on Ingram Spark for your book. You see how these records have uh, have an ISBN in them. But uh, let me show you the reason that you want to create the record. Um, to make a template. you have to go into the help section, which is, you know, okay, you know, you, you have to go into the help section to make a template. You go to cover template generator, and then given an ISBN, it is going to populate based on what you had selected for the, for the book. And you see how, in this case, this book is 484 pages. So this is the template generator, and we're going to generate a template with this. You don't have to have dashes in here, by the way. It doesn't make any difference. It still reads it. So, But these settings, presumably you've thought about what your book is going to look like, and you've chosen those things, and you know how many pages are because you're done writing, or very close to done writing. And for the file type of the template, we're going to choose PDF. We're going to put in our email address because they email the template to you. And then this, you know, probably you want to leave blank. So just to quickly go over that again, you, for the template cover generator, go to help, cover template generator, input the ISBN. If these things don't pre-populate, that means you need to go and create a record uh, uh, in Ingram for that book and get started down the line with it. Then we this is very important to get the page count and you have to be careful the page count is not what it says in Word but what it says in the PDF file that you generate with Word or whatever you use to generate your your book PDF. File type is PDF, email address, press submit, and it's going to send you a template. Now just to back up a step, really the first step is going to be to establish a workspace, a place on your computer where you're going to put the files because you're going to be copying files into it, and a lot of them. So in my case, I just put something on my desktop. I'm calling this cover example. I've got an images folder. We're going to have more images. Um, I've got a copy of my Word document, 
and I've labeled it with the ISBN in there. I think that's useful. I've also got you know a little indication of which book it is, the size, and then I've got a PDF that was generated from this. And this PDF is is useful to me because I can check to see if I look at it how many pages it's got. See, it's got 484, and we saw from the template that we needed something with 484 uh, pages. So we, we want to get in the habit of kind of matching these things up. The template also will have the ISBN on it, and as you progress through, you'll, you will use the ISBN. Like if you want to update something, you would need to know that number. And so what I also do is I make a file that has in it the, um, the ISBN, and I also put I start putting other data in here about the book sometimes if I want to make some notes or something. But anyway, so this is how so this is the start of our workflow. So now going to email, you can see Ingram Spark has sent me this. I'm just going to download this. You can see what it looks like. It's a template. It's different from the ones on Amazon. It has this uh, exterior region and, and extra data. And so let's download that. What's going to download is uh, because we asked for PDF format, and it's going to be ISBN-perfect.pdf. Perfect is the, the, the uh, cover type that we selected. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to put that into my folder. And the next thing that we have to do with this is we have to extract the image out of the PDF. So we're going to be working with a JPEG rather than a PDF directly for this in our graphics software. So in order to extract the PDF, uh, extract the image from the PDF, I'm going to use this, which is called small PDF. And like I, like I mentioned to you, I have a login you know, I eventually I subscribe to this because I use it a lot. But you don't have to subscribe. It will work. I think it lets you do three operations in a day. So that's enough for free for, for what we're doing. So anyway, what we're going to do is we are going to uh, uh, go to small PDF tools, and we're going to go PDF to JPEG. PDF to JPEG, and we're going to go to our folder. Here it is. Here's our file. Upload, select. Now we're going to choose to convert the entire page. Don't do single image. That doesn't work. Now, what's going to come back from this is a zip file. This is just a preview. So click Download, Save to Device, and then we're going to get a zip file back from here. So to get that, we've got to go over to our Downloads folder, and we'll just pull this in. So you see why it's nice to have a workspace for this. You don't just want these files dumping all over. So we're going to unzip this. I use 7-zip, and I'm going to do an extract to. So now we've got a folder here, which has this image in it. And I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to go into Images, Control-V. And I'm going to rename it. I'm going to rename this to background. Oh, I'm going to rename this to, let's see, cover template. OK, so now we've got a cover template. And let's look at it. See, the dimensions are 4,500 by 3,600. But that's not our book dimension. That's the dimension of this big file, 45 by 36. 
So, you know, your, your actual book cover dimensions are this, 5 by 8 inches or 200, 203, mil, 203 millimeters, which is, for some reason, these are always switched. So the, the 203 millimeters is the height, the 127 millimeters is the width of this section right there. Then this, uh, the, the spine is 30.5 millimeters or 1.2 inches. Sometimes when working with this, it's, it's a little bit about, uh, I, I think it's good to work with millimeters. That's what I'm going to show you. So you don't have to add up these amounts right, right this second. But basically, the width of our image, and the way that I'm going to show you this is that if you have a big enough image to cover what you want, it doesn't really matter about the size. If you want, you know, you can try to size it exactly if you're going to have somebody develop it. Uh, you, you can send them this or you can tell them that it's 203 millimeters high in my case and then 127 plus 127 plus 30.5 but I don't worry about the math uh, what I, I try to do that in the beginning but the best thing that I found is just to get an image that's going to be big enough to cover this whole space and then we'll crop it to the size that we need Okay, so we have one last prereq thing to do, which is to create our uh, barcode. So you, you don't buy a barcode, uh, just uh, follow these steps and you'll see how we're going to get a barcode. So what we're going to do is open the, uh, sorry, we're going to open the image of the cover template and then we're, go we're going to scroll down and find on here you'll see this barcode so if I zoom out You see, they give you the barcode. You just have to give them an ISBN and they give you the barcode. But what we're going to do is we're going to create this as an image for our own use later. You'll see the reason. So you go to home, just kind of zoom in on this. And again, I'm using Microsoft Paint here. You can use some other graphics program. I just think this is really easy to do with Paint. So we're going to select a rectangular region, and then you just carefully select that, like so. And just get everything that's white, and then go Crop, and then go File, Save As, JPEG. And then you're going to make sure to change this name. Don't save it as Cover Template. Save it as ISBN or actually save it as barcode. Okay, so now we're done with Microsoft Paint. We can get rid of that. We've got our barcode. So we've got basically we've got all of our visual, well, almost all of our visual elements for this. Um, so we've got a cover background. We've got a template that came from Lightning Source. We've got a barcode image. So we're good to go, and we are going to start making our cover. Now this is the next uh, uh, zero cost or low cost tool. It's called Pixlr at pixlr.com. And you can see that I'm logged in here. I do have a subscription for this, but you don't need a subscription. This will work for free. So we're going to use Pixlr E, and we're going to go in here, click Open Image, and we're going to go to our Cover Example folder, and we're going to go into Images and Cover Template. We're going to pull that in. Now, 
if you go zero cost, you won't have all of these. You won't be able to get this big, but it'll still work. Um, one of the advantages of subscribing to this is that it'll pull in the original size. So here's our template, and we want to just make this as big as we reasonably can to work with. And what we want to do is to cover, the first step is we want to cover this area with our, with our background. So this is called background, and we'll change this to cover, cover template. And that's fine. Now, this is a very important step, so I, I want you to pay close attention to this, and I may do it twice just to, to, to show you. So in Pixlr, you, these are, the controls are here on this side, and across the top is uh, the specific the attributes of the control. So, and it has layers, uh, just like uh, Photoshop would have layers. So what we're going to do here is we are going to add image as layer. We're going to grab our image. Now you see that this is pretty big and it fits this whole thing and, and it's it's in fact it's bigger than it needs to be. And you have to with lightning source you have to match this up very carefully and very exactly. So we've got this image here laid down, completely covering. Then we're going to go layer, add mask, and then the image disappears, but we get a crosshair. Now we've got to very carefully position the crosshair, and you get these green dashed lines pull them all the way down. You want the green dashed line to be sort of on the outside. And it matches up. Now, does it really match up? Well, what we can do is get out of that tool Go over here. First thing we're going to lock is that we're going to lock this so it stays where we, it is, doesn't get messed up. Go back to the layer below, and we can change the opacity. Sorry, we don't want. We want to change the opacity on this one, and we can see how we're doing. You see that it's now we're going to zoom in a little bit. You see that it's gone a little too far, right? So let's say I did this on purpose. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to just more or less get rid of that one, and I'm going to I'm going to do this again. So you can adjust this a little bit so that you can have it as big as possible because it helps for it to be big. So we're going to go layer, add image as layer, and we're going to position it just covering. So we're not worried about anything other than it being than it covering. And if you wanted to try to scale it, like let's say you want to get more of your image in there, you can. You know, say you want to try to like get most of your image in there or something. Then we're going to go layer, add mask. It's going to give us the crosshairs and we're going to very carefully make that green border and we're going to get it as tight as we can, right? Like that. And that's probably perfect, okay? Now, now that we've got that, we're going to lock it. 
So that section of getting this background on there perfectly is the hardest part of the template creation. So if you're with me and you've got this far, um, you know, that is the secret uh, sauce here. That, that is the secret part to using Pixlr for this. So next step is we just want to reduce the opacity on this. See, it's still there, but, but we don't want to look at that right now. We're going to make it opaque eventually, but right now we don't want to look at it well, because we need to see these template areas. So in my case, what I do is that I create a, uh, a mock-up of things uh, in advance so that I know what this is going to look like. But... Um, uh, and, you know, and I would encourage you to do that. You want to you want to have some idea about what you're going to have on here. So just to show you what I'm trying to achieve, this is what it's going to look like. And I'm going to uh, kind of zoom in on this and and go through it. We'll kind of walk through first and talk about it. So again, what you do is you to work use Pixel you you. You select your controls over on the left side here. So I'm just choosing an arrow so I can move around. And then for view, I'm going to zoom in. OK. So this is what, what I want to get. Now, how, how do I get this? And you, you see over here, these things are all locked. So if I choose this one, I can unlock it, and it, it makes it available for editing. So, And you can see that it's unlocked. And if you right-click, you can see that it's opacity 100%. It's unlocked. So the other thing you can see is that it's you can't really do anything with it yet. And you're like, well, why is that? Well, the reason is we're not with the text tool. So over here on the left side, choose Text. And then these things up here will change, and you can see that I'm on Leaderson. If I wanted to, I could change this to some other, some other font. Uh, we've got to go back to Leaderson. So, and uh, so the way that you control this, the way that you work with this is through the left-hand side and then up at the top, you know, like if you wanted to change the size, if you wanted to change the formats, there's line space, there's letter space. And then over in styles, you can do all kinds of wild things like uh, have an outline, you can have a background. You can cause it to have a shadow, stuff like that. So oh, that's all very useful. Um, but w how do you know that it's, it's working for the template? Well, you have to go over here, and we want the opacity to be such that we can work with it. Sorry. So sin since I'm on the text tool, you see, you got to go back like that. All right. So that's uh, how we're going to manipulate these things, is that we are going to create them. I'm just giving you kind of an overview here. We create them, and then if you want to work with them, you have to select text, and you also have to lock and unlock them. So. The next thing to talk about just in our little tour here of what we're trying to do is you see how the, the original uh, barcode is, is visible. That's because the opacity is the way that it is. But if I change the opacity, then you'll see that that original barcode goes away and the barcode that we're going to, add, that we're going to use uh, is positioned where I want it to be. So with Ingram Spark, you can put your barcode anywhere you want on the back of the cover. So it doesn't have to be, you know, the bottom left or bottom right or anything. You can put it wherever you want, as long as it's on the back. 
and as long as it's correct and the right size. So um, anyway, that's what's going on with the book cover. This is an, uh, an, the image file, and I'll, we'll, we'll do that in a minute. The other thing is you can see here that um, we've got this text going vertically. And we've also got text over here, which I have taken from the book. So you want to get this text kind of ready. You know, I've got a Goodreads quote here. I've got some text for the, for the back of the book. So those are things we didn't talk about, but you, you want to kind of have that stuff prepared um, and ready to go. Um, I think maybe that is a good tour. So now we can go back to, to our clean slate and create these things. We'll step through that. So when I'm working on this, what I'm doing is off screen, I have this thing that I made uh, is the design and I printed it out. And so this is what I want the cover to look like. This is what I'm working towards. So that's a good idea. You know, you can come in and just do some with Pixlr. You can just do some designs of things and kind of establish what you want. Um, or you can have a go. This is kind of an iterative process. It may take a few times to get what you want. Remember, once you upload your book, you know Ingram, Ingram is going to charge you $50 for the privilege of uploading your text. They're going to charge you $25 for the text upload and $25 for the cover upload. So you really want your cover to be done. You want your book to be done and you want your cover to be really you know, looking really, really sharp. So it's going to take you a few stages to get there. And if you make kind of a, 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 a thing for yourself to just see, you know, what it would look like, and you can even wrap, print it out on a piece of paper, wrap it around a book of the same size, uh, see what it's going to look like, and make sure you're satisfied with it. Um, so I'm looking at my off screen, I'm looking at my uh, my cover file, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit because you can move around with this, and it, and it helps you if this is, is as big as you can get it to be. And then I'm going to go to the text control, click add text, I'm going to choose, it, this is on Leaderson, but you, you would choose the font you want. And I'm going to take And then you're going to put this. Now you can see that. So one of the nice things you can do is you can change the line space and this will make it look more professional to, to adjust the letter space. And you can also, uh, you know, really get creative with this stuff, but, you know, go through it, design, make a design, try, try a few iterations of it to get what you want. I'm just showing you the basics here. Um, it also helps to write down the sizes and things that you're using, but I'm, I'm not going to show you that right now. So I think that this should actually be a little bigger, like not that big. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you how to do the text for this. So first thing is let's lock this. So this is now locked and, and it's not going to get messed up. So we're going to go back over here, choose text. We're going to click into it, into the view, and that will cause add text to come up. And then we're going to do add text.
Now what we're doing is we're working on the spine. Now you see how this looks weird. It's like, why does it look like that? Well, the reason is that that layer is below the other stuff. So we're going to drag that up to the top. So you have to, so you'll have that happen to you. You just drag the layers up to the top. Another thing that you can do here for visibility is that you can go to the fill and choose a color like black. Black is not going to be the color of this text, but it makes the visibility good. Then, see this little guy here? We're going to drag him. And what I do is I put the text over here. And when it's over here, you can see very clearly if it is uh, level. So you see how just by luck I got that to be uh, perfectly uh, the 90 degrees. You'll have to just play with it a little bit. So once it's, once it's 90 degrees, then you can drag this around without messing it up. And these bars are going to adjust based on the size of it. And so you can align this like vertically, I want this to match up. And then I'm going to go back over here and go back to white, because white is what I'm after. And this is a little big for my design, but I'm going to leave it like that because this is just a demo for you guys. So now that, so I, I've showed you how to manipulate these, and I've showed you how to get this to be vertical text and how to uh, align it. And then the next useful thing is let's do our barcode. So we're going to get out of the text tool. We're going to just come back up here. Layer, add image as layer. Choose our barcode. Now we're in the arrow tool. So the arrow tool let us drag this around. You can put this here, you know, if you want, but you don't have to. I, for some reason, I like to have it right about there. And that, then, if we uh, just adjust this, you will see that it looks very good, right? Now you want to size. You want to do a little size comparison because what you're after is you want this to be the same size. This is a little large, so you want this to be the same size as there. You know you don't want it to be too big or too small. So I think that's about right. So once you're happy with that, go over here and then lock it. So what you want to end up with. See, I didn't lock this. You want all your stuff to be locked so you don't accidentally screw it up. So now we've got, uh, uh, we're, we're, you know, we're making progress. Uh, I want to add more text, which I'm going to do now. I'm going to click in to do add text, click add text. I'm going to change this font. And again, you see it's kind of doesn't look quite right, so we're going to slide that up here, and it will become visible. I'm going to make this quite a bit smaller. And this is going to say newly edited and annotated. OK, and I'm going to, you can see how this lines up. It'll give you a bar that lines it up nicely with that or with that. that those are, that's handy. It gives you some visual balance to things. OK, now what if you want this to have a color? Well, you click Fill, and then maybe I want it to be this gold color. So to to do colors in Pixlr, what it has this little thing which is kind of handy. So one of the things you can do 
you come over here, make this max. Let's say you want a color that matches off of here for this text. Let's go back to this text. So we're in edit mode for this text right here. And we've got this color, but we're maybe we're not happy with this color. We can go like that and we say maybe maybe we want it to be this well like one of these colors. Maybe we want it to be, you know, like that. So in that way you can select a different a different color. This is a little color chooser. Okay, so we're jumping ahead here a little bit. Uh, I just don't want to waste your time. I'm not. I'm not sort of hiding anything. It's just that uh, this is time consuming, and so um, as you spend time in Pixlr, you will you you will get more comfortable with it. But I've shown you the basic things. I've shown you how to do the things that are that are that are hard, which is how to how to get the uh, well how to get the uh, the background on there, how to get the text on, how to do vertical text, how to do get the barcode file on there. And if you have other file other image files then you would you would add them in as layers the same way. Um, now remember I told you that when you use a when you use a, an image there may be some requirement on you. And in this case, let me show you this. So the deal with Hubble is that they want, so I've got to go over the selection here, yeah. The deal with the, with, with the Hubble Space Telescope is that they want you to give credit right on the image. I'm doing it in a book, but they actually want you to put it right on the image itself. So you see I've added this line, cover background image, tapestry of blazing star birth, credit NASA, ESA, and STSCL. So that's that's the credit that they require in order to use their image. Um, and that's cool. And you want to make sure that you cover all your bases. Don't steal anything from anybody. It's pretty important. So we're basically done with our template and we're looking sharp. And, and the things to notice is does your image still look like this? You, you need everything on here to not change. So you, if you scroll down to the bottom, you should be able to see this document size. That's the, that's the size eventually of the PDF, and we will verify that later. But for the moment, you gotta make sure that the image has everything on it. Ingram Spark will not accept this if it's just the, you know, the book cover part. You have to have the whole thing. So we've completed the design of our book, book cover. It's simple, but um, you know, I think it looks okay. I think it looks good enough to, to go with. So I'm going to then go over here and go file, and I'm going to choose save, and I'm going to choose 100% and you see that this size is the expected size, so we're, we're saving out the whole thing. Now if you're going with the free, if, if you're not having a subscription, then this may not let you go as big. It's okay, it'll still work. Um, so, but uh, with a subscription, you can, you can have uh, the, the, the size that, that you need here. So over here you can see that it's 5.6 megabytes. So I do 100% JPEG because I want 100% quality. I don't want compression on it at this point. So I'm going to do save as, and I'm going to save it into our images folder. I'm going to call this completed cover. And then if you want to, you can go File, Save, and there is, they, they have uh, a, a, pix, a Pixlr document format that you can sort of save your, jo save your job in. Uh, uh, you can even try to do a PDF here, but I'm going to show you a different way to do that. 
So a couple of options there to explore. But anyway, at this moment we have completed the cover and we're going to move on to the next stages of the workflow. So we're back at our workspace folder and we've got our completed cover image in here. And what we need to do is turn it into a PDF because Ingram Spark expects it to be a PDF. However, we can't make it into PDF yet. There's an interim step. The interim step is that Ingram Spark expects that this JPEG is in CMYK color, uh, 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 color palette. So right now this is an RGB color palette. So there is an open source tool to do that and it doesn't require a subscription or anything. RGB to cmyk.org. This is really nice. I haven't given them any money yet. I, I'm considering that I should donate to them. Anyway, RGB to cmyk.org. So what we're doing is we're going to take our completed cover, which is an RGB color palette, and we are going to turn it into a CMYK so they say, if you're not sure which profile you should use, choose the default, and this is the default. And then leave that blank, click Start. And then it's going to convert that image into CMYK. Now, you're going to notice that it looks different, okay? This is before, this is after it. It it looks different, right? And so is there any issue with it looking different? Well, it has to be CMYK for Ingram Spark to take it uh, as per their, their instructions. So, you know, if if this is a problem for you and you're unhappy with the way it looks, then you're going to have to find somebody with Adobe who can change it, you, who can you know muck around with the with the color scheme to get it the way that you want. For me, I, I don't really care. I mean, I think it looks great. So I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to paste it in here. So we've got our completed cover underscore CMYK. This is so so this is the uh, this is the input and this is the output. And I, I think it looks just fine. I, I don't think it looks bad. So it does it match exactly to this? Well, you'll see some variation in the colors, but it's because CMYK is for, for Printer's Ink, which is different from on-screen. So, like I say, there are people, you, you can go on YouTube and find videos of people whining and bitching about that, but look, it, it's just the way it is as far as I'm concerned. So, that's, we've converted successfully from RGB to CMYK. And all we have to do now is take this JPEG and we go back to our small PDF. And now we want to go the other way. We want to go JPEG to PDF. Choose Files. Make sure you get the CMYK one. Now, this is very important. Uh, through trial and error, I learned that you have to choose these options. Auto and no margin. So let me go over that again. Choose auto and no margin here. And then click convert. And give it a minute. So it will do a preview of it. And you click download, save to device. Show in folder. So now we go to the top level of our folder. Completed cover. So I convert. Okay. So there is our PDF. Let's take a look at it.
Now, this is pretty much done, so you want to check it carefully. Does it match up? Does, the do does it still show the document size being 15 by 12 down at the bottom? Does it look, does it, you know, does it look good? Does it match up what your expectations are? Now, there's one final step here. And this is uh, uh, the place where I actually do use an Adobe product. <laughs> because I can't figure out any other way to do it. But it's a free product, and so it's not a big deal to me. So I'm going to, what we want to do is we want to verify the size of the, the size of the PDF because it's really important that it be correct. So I'm going to uh, uh, open with, and I have Acrobat DC on here. This is just the reader. And in the reader, if you do a control D, it will bring up this document properties, control D. And you see that the paper size is 11 by nine. That's not what we were expecting. We're expecting 15 by 12. So we got a big problem because our process changed the size of the PDF, you know, the paper size. So we've got to fix that. So the way that we're going to do that is that we are going to go to one more tool, which is Adjust PDF Page Size. So I always search on Adjust PDF Page Size. This is PDF to Go. The, the small PDF doesn't seem to do this. I go to PDF to go, and I choose my file, and again we go up here, this is, this is the one, and that will upload, and once that's uploaded, then we are going to choose set custom page size. Now, while that's uploading, let's go back just quickly and make a mental note of what we're after. What we're after is the page size is 305 by 381. So that's uh, 381 is the width, 305 is the height. So it says 15 inches by 12. But then in millimeters, it's 305 by 381. I think that that's because maybe in America, they, they do width by height, and then maybe in other part of the world, they do height by width. I don't know the reason. But anyway, the 381 is the width, 305 is the height. Okay. So now back over here, we've uploaded our PDF. We're going to set custom page size in millimeters. We're going to do the width 381 by 305. You'll have to type those in. I just, they're in the, the browsers remembering it for me. But for you, you'll have to type it in. So we've uploaded file, set custom page size, 381 wide by 305. Start. Now this site, we just wait, and it will, on its own, uh, I think it will download Yes. Okay, show in folder. And it's going to have, I think, uh, the same name. So it's okay. We don't need the old one. Replace. So now when we go and look at this, open with Adobe, do Control D. You see that now this says 15 by 12, which is what we need. So we were able to scale the page size. It doesn't, doesn't, uh, and I've, I haven't been able to find anywhere else that I can check the page size. You don't even have to really check the page size. You can just go scale it and assume you want to scale it. You don't even really have to check it if you don't want. But I like to check it. So now finally, this is our completed cover. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to name this. Um, I'm going to name this with the naming convention that Ingram Spark specifies, which is that you do ISBN 
dash cover. And this is the completed cover ready to go, ready to be uploaded into Ingram. So I hope this tutorial has been useful to you. Um, if you have questions about it, you can uh, shoot me an email. If you're a subscriber on my channel, uh, I, there's a good chance that I'll respond.